uh, over the last few days I think I'd like to read today but it's also some stuff on the screen that um, I want to show okay so this first thing is um, a movie uh, file that I uploaded a couple days ago having to do with my medical visits this particular one so there's six six different I think there's six, six different episodes of this me looking at my chart my medical charts and sort of talking about some of some of just like I said barely looking at the tip of the iceberg of my medical issues I mean my problems with the medicals with hospitals and doctors and things um, and trying to address these issues which are all implant based attacks um, for some reason this num number four keeps showing up again and again I'm not sure what's on why like I feel like it seems to me like somebody's opening this on my computer even after I shut it that there's something else I guess to address with this so I'll go back to that later um, I'm feeling effects to my heart right now so I was just about to come on and say that I feel better than I've been feeling um, I you know this shows the last past visit is October 22nd and this was made on the 8th of that's interesting because this was made on November 8th and I actually just happened to start making this video at exactly 11 8 a.m. okay I didn't intentionally do that I just noticed that just now um, it's so weird it's when I do notice things like that it just tells me how much this is going on how much um, and this isn't just with me okay lots of people are being controlled this much okay um, maybe not as much as me I don't know I, I, I don't know okay I'm just figuring this all out as I go along okay so what I want to say is that I was in the hospital yesterday morning yeah because I couldn't just couldn't stand the pain anymore and I wasn't getting anywhere with um, primary care and um, since I've been talking about medicine I better I might as well talk about that um, I was not given any pain relief at the hospital However, after I left the hospital, I started to feel better, and I feel much better this morning than I felt any other morning that I can remember over the past week and a half. And now, but I feel some effects to my heart. It's almost like a popping kind of thing going on with my heart now, and that's it's like this popping feeling, and it's that's kind of happened off and on. <laughs> um, when they ask you about what's going on with your heart, I don't think they have check boxes for some of the stuff that I've been experiencing, so they file it all under palpitations. Um, anyway, and now I feel, anyway, so yeah, there's, it's just, um, okay, so, <clears throat> trying to focus on what I'm trying to focus on, I was in the emergency room, um, and although I was not given any pain medication and I really hesitated to go especially with the COVID spike and everything there was hardly anyone there I figured it would probably be you know it was a calculated risk at 5 a.m. Monday morning because usually if you're in pain Sunday night you try to stick it out until 8 a.m. when you can get an you know and so it's a whole I can't believe I've used the emergency room and doctors so much because of this that I'm starting to figure out when the traffic is better than other times anyhow Um, I don't know what it is about this, so I'll have to look at it again later and see. Um, other things that have been showing up on the computer. I work on my, you know, when I'm working on my videos and I, and I work on files, um, <sighs> talking about the video. And what I and and I talked about before how sometimes I, I, I'll make sure everything's saved and everything, and I'll stop my computer and go do something else. But then sometimes I'll come back and I see that they haven't been saved, like I thought they were. That was a weird cursor change. Um, and this has been happening specifically with these two files now. So this file 
was um, a, are the are the notes from a video I made on the seventh of November uh, about how while I was walking home from the e store that evening and thinking about something, the name Trayvon Martin dropped into my head, and what I was thinking about the whole time home was I was trying to figure out how to. I, I, my mind is saying police right now, but I don't know that it was police. I feel like it was, I was talking, I was thinking about doctors. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, I felt like I was trying to think about my medical issues. I think I was. I was trying to think about how to, how to discuss my medical issues so that I could stay focused um, on the most important stuff and the most make it the, make it make the most sense because when you have something that's this, this big and gone on for this long and involved this many people it becomes sometimes hard to pick out the most important threads especially if you're trying to figure out what the intent is as well there's an intent going on you're not sure what it is um, now, when I say police, was I thinking about medicine or was I thinking about police? It's increasingly clear to me that medicine and police are really bonded, like really bonded. And it appears to me there's probably a two-way control system. I mean, you know what I mean? Because um, any given police officer could be controlled, I would think, by a medical system because of the how ease of, you know, Dealing, putting implants into a person, using them. Meanwhile, the police also have access to this kind of power and technology. So the police, I think, I think right now what's going on is the police sometimes throw their weight around on the hospital systems and the doctors, especially, and the hospital systems or the doctors. You know, have that also the ability to manipulate police. So I'm not really sure how they. Um, work out that power balance amongst themselves, but I think probably is Freemasonry, right? Whatever rules they're following are, I think, being regulated through Masonic systems. Um, so yesterday I was thinking about, I think I was thinking about my medical history, but what that reminds me of when I said police, when my mind is saying police, police, um, is when I was walking home from the hospital. Okay, so the, so on the seventh, I was thinking about medical stuff. On the eighth, ninth, when I was walking home from the hospital, something else came to my head the same way, uh, and it was the word Mazel Tov, and it was in front of a, another a certain house across the street. And at that time, I was thinking about the police. So. I, I sometimes think, is it what I'm thinking about that's triggering this, or is it, I, I, it happens while I'm, wa when it happens while I'm walking, I don't know, or I'm wondering, is it what I'm thinking about, or is it the home I'm walking in front of, or is it possible it could be both at the same time? Because I don't know how, to what degree my thought processes are controlled. I just know there's certain times when um, my thoughts are being steered, and a lot of times it's situations like that where I'm engaged in a repetitive activity and my mind starts to wander and chew over something, right? That that seems to be a period of time when um, people's minds are accessible to being steered. <sighs> anyway. So I was walking home from the store. Twice the name Trayvon Martin drops into my head. I had not been, there's no reason why I should have been thinking about Trayvon Martin. It wasn't related, as far as I could tell, to anything at all going on around me. So I made a video showing, I think, this video shows where I was when the name dropped into my head. Based on, and I used Google Maps rather than photographs. Okay, so then the other one that's highlighted is this one. And now this one is interesting because this other thing is showing up. And now I realize this isn't me doing it for sure because I fixed these kinds of errors the day before this. And now then I come back in the morning and this, this is showing up again. These two dots. Two dots right here instead of one. And I suspect that is um, indicating there's a twin situation here and specifically twin assassination either that happened or is planned. So this, these video notes are talking about a cat named Odin. 
actually that's not what it's talking about. This is I because I didn't keep really careful notes about this video, so maybe I should even look at the video and see what what it is. But um, and before I do that, in the notes, I'm okay. So this is what where I'm walking to the store and. Or maybe just taking a walk, and um, so I noticed that all of a sudden my back pain is increasing, and I'm getting this strong sensation on my left finger of itchiness, like I want it makes me want to scratch my left finger, and so I made this video. I just pulled out my camera and made this video talking about that and my thoughts about what that might mean and how I my response to it. Um, but so if I link this then with this, what's, what does this say, um, here it says, okay, I, the name Trayvon Martin was dropping into my head, but I said that if it's Trayvon Martin, then if Trayvon Martin was a mind control linked killing, which it appears that it was, I think that's why it dropped into my head. Um, there's probably some kind of link between him and me or Chris or someone like that. So I looked up information about him and I didn't say this, I think, I don't remember. I'm, I'm confused about what I, what I've said and what I haven't said because I've made so many videos. Um, I'm concerned that there's a link here to my daughter's boyfriend. This is what it comes down to. I'm concerned about a link to my daughter's boyfriend. She met him in Washington, D.C. in 2018. Um, and she was there doing an internship, and he was attending Howard University. Um, and I believe he grew up in Miami. Well, he grew up in a town called Hollywood, Florida. So the word Hollywood is a link. Um, the Hollywood Max incidents in Portland in 2017, Hollywood, California. In fact, the very first time I was... Uh, well, may maybe not the first time I stayed overnight in Portland, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into it. It's just Hollywood is a link, a link, a link, a link, the word Hollywood, even the word Holly and Buddy Holly. Um, so like, like Trayvon Martin, my daughter's boyfriend was born in, in Miami in 1995. So I see potential links between Trayvon Martin and my daughter's boyfriend. So I've been talking off and on a lot about my concerns about my daughter specifically. And, you know, that there have, there's threats against her that they, you know, this group of people that have been imprisoning us want to kill her. And, you know, the important thing for people to know is, regard. I don't know what people know, what people don't know about this, but it's really clear that the people that were brought into our lives deliberately by the architects of this situation these people were brought into our lives to harm us. Um, I realize that there were architects trying to manipulate things on both sides. There were certain things that you could say might go one way or the other, but as far as the people themselves, with a few exceptions, with a few, I would, I, should, I would say with a few exceptions, but the thing about those exceptions is those exceptions were eventually turned, I, it appears, because, or at least had to be silenced or were silenced because, um, because of the power behind the people who were trying to harm us. So when I, Mike Payne is, is, is a good example of that. And it's possible that my daughter's boyfriend, current boyfriend, in fact, it's likely that my daughter's current boyfriend is in the slot that my, with my daughter, that Mike Payne was in with me. And I would say, you know, I mean, going just only from my own experience, that was a very, very damaging situation. And it continues to be in a very damaging situation. And in fact, I think Mike Payne is one of the people who'd be plotting against my daughter right now. Um, if not the instigator, but you know, that he's working from an older plan. That's, he was put into a place because they had a plan that they expected him to carry out. And it wasn't for my benefit by any means. And so the people that he has is his deputies, because as far as I can tell, Mike Payne, as far as I can tell, is the highest person that I know of in this situation. 
I hear people alluding to this idea of there's a president or a king, maybe a president and a king. I don't know. Some countries have things like that. Um, it's possible that one of these people is Mike Payne. Um, and if that's the case, then all this other stuff that is of such concern to me, such as the murders of my pets, um, which clearly predated Mike Payne, he's been trained, obviously, by like I just said that, he's been trained by another group. Um, you know, it's illnesses and murders of family members and things like that, and people that I found that were associated with all of that, I think he's... If this is a hierarchical structure, he's higher up than all of that. And so that's all been done with his blessing, and if not under his order. Now, is he taking orders from another group? If so, I think they're a Masonic group. Maybe maybe all the Freemasons. I don't know. Um, so I do not know my daughter's boyfriend. She's now been going out with him since 2018. Um, it's 2020. They seem like they're in a very committed relationship. Um, he doesn't seem comfortable with me and I can understand. I mean, I don't know, really know what the intent is, but I have empathy for him because of what my daughter has told me about him, about his situation. Um, it sounds to me like he's in a very difficult situation. And so it seems to me like a lot of people who are native in this situation, and maybe also black, although I don't know because I don't know many black people, and the black people that I know, I don't know very well. Um, but it seems to me, you know, it's a result of various different things. But anyway, I, you know, it's the reality for me. Um, but it seems to me the Native Americans, but also because Native Americans are closer to me, um, at least some, um, they are being squeezed. That's what I feel like. Now, nobody's ever said we're being squeezed, but I feel that they're being squeezed. Um, I feel that my, daughter, my, my daughter's boyfriend would be in the position of being squeezed if he were to want to wiggle away from what I think his mission is, which is something given to him by Mike Payne, who wants my daughter dead, okay? I believe that Mike Payne wants my daughter dead. Especially if he can... I mean, I don't know what Mike Payne really wants. I mean, what does he really want? And why Why is he not... I mean, it sounds to me like a lot of the problems that are going on are because he won't let go of something. Um, is that entirely his issue or is there somebody behind him pulling his strings or you know I have I don't know I just don't know and when you get the mind control stuff wrapped in here then it, you know I, I'm always asking myself how much is any decision that anyone makes their own decision if they have implanted um, implants in their head or around their head in their head you know, and all you need is, as far as I can tell, some dental work to have some implants in your head. And you don't even need that. You might, you think, you think you have no implants in your head. They can come in in the night and, or, you know, in it, some kind of situation. Maybe the day you were born, they did it. They just put something up your nose. Um... It's possible that my daughter's boyfriend is involved as an assassin. If my daughter's boyfriend is involved in this situation at all, from what I could tell based on the way I grew up and what I've seen with the people around me, he is required to, at the very least, witness a severe crime or a series of severe crimes and stay silent about them, at the very least. But the way you progress in this group that is possibly run by Mike Payne, but probably not, probably with him having strings pulled by others, is the way you progress is through assassination. And um, 
you know, perhaps the mentality is that you've you've shown your loyalty and your courage and all of this kind of stuff. But in reality, it's also now there's something on you. You're going to be worried your whole life. You don't want to, you know, get found out. Um, you need the protection of this group now because you've committed this crime. Um, and so it shows you how people get deeper and deeper and deeper, especially if they're able to climb higher and higher and higher in society because they're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So the only, you know, it's like the only way to go is down at some point, I guess, you know, and you think you're going up. The only way to go up is up, but you can't go down or, you know, there's this whole thing. So, um, I show here associated video B.O.B. the elephant. Why did why was that associated? I don't even remember. Oh, it's because of the the you know this idea of Edgefield somehow came into it. So anyway, I'll have to look at that video again. But um, another B.O.B. song and video keeps coming to me with regards when I start thinking about my daughter's boyfriend, and that is um, it's uh, the one called three is a magic number and it's specifically the lyric about Bob Ross and you know okay well this one has Miami in it as well doesn't it This, okay, so there's a music video to go along with this. It's like a cartoon. Um, this one here, a hood bitch but not financially hood, moved down for, to Miami for good. There's somebody that that person reminds me of that I think of every time that character appears on, on the screen. Um, so maybe that person is linked to my daughter's boyfriend. In fact, there's reasons why I think she might be linked to my daughter's boyfriend. Um, where is the part about Bob Ross? Okay. Trying to paint. Well, me and my bitch flip your bitch like real estate. So, real estate questions that I've been having. Um, I'm trying to paint two bitches. Watch me illustrate. So this is an allusion to the twins. And paint, I believe, is, you know, to color someone, to, you know, sort of give a slanted testimony about someone. Um, so that is suggesting somebody who wants to get rid of some, you know, wants... Uh, to try to paint two would be to try to get a twin killing to happen, I think. Illustrate. Um, I'm Bob Ross. I don't get erased. So if you watched public television in the 80s, you would see this guy named Bob Ross. And I think I think most people know who he is because he still shows up. You know, his shows still show up. So he used to say... Um, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. So if you, you know, you accidentally swipe a little bit of something on your canvas, turn it into something, you know, he paints these landscapes, but they're all from his imagination. Um, so no mistakes, just happy little accidents. So he doesn't erase it, try to erase his mistakes. He just turns them into part of his painting. So when he says, I'm Bob Ross, I don't get erased, it makes me think that um, somebody here is talking about, um, you know, I'm the painter, right? I'm the one who's bringing the news and everything like that. I'm not going to get erased. In other words, I'm not going to be eliminated, assassinated, because I'm the painter. The irony, right... There's irony here. Bob Ross died at the age of 52 of cancer. So Bob Ross did, I, I would say Bob Ross did get erased. So
this isn't true. So I'm concerned about my daughter and her boyfriend, both. I think that there I think that he he's in a situation that the landscape is changing from what it was. I think a lot of people felt like we can just get higher and higher and higher up on this situation as long as we, you know, follow the rules of this system. Well, that, I don't think that ever was the truth, but it's less and less the truth. Um, so um, I think that, you know, he's got to be, you know, I know he was accepted into Harvard Law School. My daughter's boyfriend was accepted into Harvard Law School and turned them down. Now, that's that in and of itself is another interesting. That's even mentioned in another song, a Jindana song. Rejected Harvard. Um, before it ever happened with him. I'm not saying, you know, it's just, it's weird how this timing of these things is. Sometimes things are predictive. And there's things I've seen in videos that suggest to me that my daughter's boyfriend was picked out for her years ahead of time, possibly. And that, if that's the case, then she was brought to Washington, D.C. specifically to meet him. And because neither one of them is from Washington, D.C. Interestingly, the same thing with my grandmother. My grandmother, you know, met my mom's dad in Seattle. He's from Chicago when she was from Minneapolis. So um, you see the patterns. Um, so I want my daughter to be able to be with somebody who's interested in her for who she is and wasn't picked out by another group way ahead of time with an alternative agenda. And I don't want her time to be, you know, her time and her energy and everything to be taken up like mine was in it. Like I said, as a woman, this is much worse because we have a certain amount of time where, you know, if we want to have children, we have a certain amount of time where we can get a lot of stuff done before, you know, we're put into a motherhood role. I mean, you know, she should have... She should be spending her time with people who are interested in her for who she is, not interested in progressing in a system and using her as a stepping stone. And um, that's just how it is. Now, what this is saying here also, I mean, I don't want to forget Trayvon Martin himself. I don't just want to use him as a launch pad. Um, this was a period of time when I wasn't playing paying a lot of attention to the news a little bit but not a lot because I was busy with a lot of things you know with my daughter and you know Chris and my band and all trying to get ahead in life um, in that I did talk about already this potential link to the idea of Twin Lakes um, as well as Miami the name Zimmerman which by the way means room man Zimmer means room um, is also Bob Dylan's la real last name. Um, I've never been to Florida. I don't know anything about Florida. My relatives in Minneapolis would go to Florida for like every year, I think. I mean, I always heard about them going to Florida. I think people in Minnesota did that a lot. So maybe that's part of why Florida seems like it's so linked up here. I don't know. But um, as I've said before, the one encouraging thing about this is if all of these things, these things that really make the news and really um, create a lot of concern that these things are almost without exception mind control linked events meaning in this case well I mean from what I can tell they can bring two people to a precise location at a precise time and control what they say think and do so if this was that type of event, the whole thing was planned out from beginning to end by an, somebody outside of the people who are directly there at the scene. So if we could shine the light on that, bring it out, make it clear um, that this is a problem that needs to be addressed, then we're solving a lot of problems at the same time. We're solving problem of mass shootings. We're pro solving a problem having to, you know, um, 
things linked to wars and things like that because wars sometimes get I don't I don't know about war wars might be something else but certainly mass shootings um, well yeah wars because 9-11 from what I can tell was in the same category the 9-11 attacks um, so that's a, that was certainly a war situation um, mass shootings wars you know a lot of cancers a lot of heart problems a lot of chronic pain issues um, you know the health system it might be the point where the health system shifts like the health system kind of had to shift around when COVID started because people needed lots of attention for COVID and they started to stay away for you know more routine things um, things like that happen so systems need to shift it's not always going to be the same um, so maybe there's going to be fewer sick people maybe there's going to be fewer sick pets and maybe that's actually a good thing it might make people less money but I think in, I think most people on this planet if they sat and thought about it for a minute would think that yeah it is a good thing if we have less shootings especially less mass shootings or random murders quote-unquote random murders it would be a good thing if fewer people got cancer it would be a good thing if fewer people had heart problems it would be a good thing if you fewer people had chronic pain it would be a good thing if um you know and on and on and on and on and on it would be a good thing if children were not being traumatized if family members weren't being murdered simply to traumatize other family members which is absolutely going on if there were fewer car crashes if we didn't have a missing and murdered indigenous woman problem that's another thing I need to talk about so even though as horrifying as this is the thing is if it was made clear and brought out and spoken about we could actually have a shot at solving it and once again as I've said before the longer you wait on this the worse it's gonna get because this technology is very sophisticated you don't want to wait 10 years before you solve this pro start to solve this problem